Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsot, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, on this eighth day of our novena, as we prepare for the installation of the new Archbishop of Manila, Cardinal Jose Advincula, we pray in this Mass for the Archdiocese of Manila. We pray for all the priests, the religious men and women, and the laity of our local church. May we be truly the mystical body of Christ. May we be truly a united and loving church, a reflection of the Trinity. Let us now call to mind our sins and entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into, into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in each pilgrim church throughout the world make visible the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. 
graciously grant that your faithful may be so united to their shepherd and gathered together in the Holy Spirit through the Gospel and the Eucharist as to worthily embody the universality of your people and become a sign and instrument in the world of the presence of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. Abram was very rich in livestock, silver, and gold. Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents, so that the land could not support them if they stayed together. Their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. There were quarrels between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and those of Lot's. At this time, the Canaanites and the Perizzites were occupying the land. So Abram said to Lot, Let there be no strife between you and me, or between your herdsmen and mine, for we are kinsmen. Is not the whole land at your disposal? Please separate from me. If you prefer the left, I will go to the right. If you prefer the right, I will go to the left. Lot looked about and saw how well watered the whole Jordan plain was as far as Zoar, like the Lord's own garden or like Egypt. This was before the Lord had destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot therefore chose for himself the whole Jordan plain and set out eastward. Thus they separated from each other. Abraham stayed in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled among the cities of the plain, pitching his tents near Sodom. Now the inhabitants of Sodom were very wicked in the sins they committed against the Lord. After Lot had left, the Lord said to Abraham, Look about you, and from where you are, Gaze to the north and south, east and west. All the land that you see I will give to you and your descendants forever. I will make your descendants like the dust of the earth. If anyone could count the dust of the earth, your descendants too might be counted. Set forth and walk about in the land through its length and breadth. For to you I will give it. Abraham moved his tents and went on to settle near the terebinth of Mamre, which is at Hebron. There he built an altar to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. He who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. He who walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue. He who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Who harms not his fellow man, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the Lord. He who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Who lends not his money at usury and accepts no bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be disturbed. He who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Please stand. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not give what is holy to dogs, or throw your pearls before swine, lest they trample them underfoot, and turn and tear you to pieces. Do to others whatever you would have them do to you. This is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road broad that leads to destruction, and those who enter through it are many. How narrow the gate and constricted the road that leads to life, and those who find it are few. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, since yesterday, we have been listening to the story of Abram in our first reading. Yesterday, we heard the story of the call of Abram. God commanded Abram to leave his homeland and go to a land that God would point out to him. And despite his old age, Abram was already 75 years old at that time. Despite his age, he obeyed God. This shows us that Abram is truly a man of faith. But Abram was not just a man of faith. Abram was also a good man, a man who relates well with others, a man who would always make peace with others. And our readings today show this to us. When Abram left his homeland, he took with him his nephew, Lot. And both Lot and Abram are very wealthy. They both have many livestock. And when they settled in Canaan, the land pointed out to them by the Lord, because of their many livestock, the herdsmen often quarrel with each other because each of them wanted to monopolize the better watered area in the land for their flocks. Nagaagawan sila ng magandang lugar para sa kanilang mga inaalagaan. Kaya pala, madalas nag-aaway ang mga tauhan ni Abram at ang mga tauhan ni Lot. And this bothered Abram. He was afraid that eventually he and Lot, who is his relative, might end up fighting each other. Baka sila na yung mag-away sa bandang huli. And so he suggested to Lot that they separate, that they divide the land between themselves. And he allowed Lot, based on our first reading today, to choose what part of the land he wanted. Siyempre, kung ikaw ang unang pipili, pipiliin mo yung mas magandang lugar. But Abram was the 
patriarch of the clan. He was elder. He was the uncle. And because of that position, he had the right of the first choice. Dahil siyang nakakatanda, siya dapat ang unang pipili. At kung ano yung matira, yun yung sa nakakabata niyang pamangkin. But Abram yielded that right. He allowed Lot to make the first choice, to choose the area of the land that he wanted. Because for Abram, what is more important is his relationship with his nephew. He wants that even as they separate, they will continue to be in good relationship with one another. Di bali nang makuha niya ang mas magandang lupa, basta magkasundo pa din kami. A good man, a man who relates well with others, a man who makes peace. And because of his goodness, Abram will be rewarded. If you follow the readings in the next days, you will see how in the eyes of men and of God, Abram will be held in high esteem. My dear brothers and sisters, let us learn from Abram especially in relating to one another. Sometimes, in order to make peace, in order to maintain peace, in order to maintain our good relationships, we have to let go of certain things that we deserve in order that we may not cut off our relationship with one another. Things that are not really a matter of life and death. Things that are not really an issue of morality. Things that we could easily give up for the sake of good relationship. How many relationships have been destroyed because we are not willing to give up simple things. May mga maliliit naman na bagay na pwede na nating ipaubaya. Pwede na nating let go para lamang hindi tayo mag-away. Pero minsan, dahil pinanghahawakan pa natin ng maliliit na bagay na ito, yung maliit na bagay lumalaki at nauuwi sa mas malaking problema. The example of Abram shows us that we have to be good to one another and being good to one another entails letting go, entails little sacrifices for something that is better. And if we are able to do that, like Abram, goodness will also return to us and God will surely reward us. That is the golden rule mentioned by Jesus in the Gospel. Do to others whatever you would have them do to you. Please stand. Christ promises that the narrow gate leads to life. Let us come to our Heavenly Father with the trust and confidence of the prayer our Lord taught us. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the church may guide the flock to the door that leads to life. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. That as a community, we may treat one another with respect, consideration, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may carry out God's will by our compassionate dealings with others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the sick and those suffering from various illnesses may find strength and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may be raised with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray in silence for our personal petitions. Let us remember the people who need our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. Heavenly Father, create within us sincerity of heart so that we may love and respect others as you treasure them. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Celebrating the memorial of your Son's boundless love, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through the ministry of your church, the, the fruits of his saving work may advance the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise. O Lord, Father of infinite goodness, for by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation, and having filled her with life by the power of your Spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness which, is Christ, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth while with all the church as one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most holy, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit 
to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that he has handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church, which is in Manila, by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope and Broderick our Administrator and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under, under my roof, roof but, but only say, say the word, word and, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. In this your church, O Lord, may integrity of faith, holiness of life, fraternal charity, and pure religion flourish and abide until the end. And as you do not fail to feed her with the body of your Son and with your word, so also never cease, we pray, to guide her under your protection, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us all together pray the prayer of gratitude for the gift of our new Archbishop. Lord Jesus Christ, Good Shepherd and High Priest, we praise you and offer you our sincere gratitude for calling Cardinal Jose Advincula to serve as our Archbishop. May he lead us as a loving shepherd who cares for his flock and seeks out the lost sheep. May he be for us a gentle and listening father, a faithful teacher, and a steward of your sacred mysteries. Grant him health, strength, and wisdom. Strengthen the bonds of unity among us, your priests and faithful in our archdiocese, so that we may serve you as one body. Purify us and sustain us in charity, for your love for us never fails. Grant that the faithful of our local church may boldly answer your call to mission. You who live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. On Thursday, we shall have the solemn installation of Cardinal Jose Advincula, the 33rd Archbishop of Manila. And in view of this event, we will not have our regular 7.30 in the morning and 12.10 in the afternoon Masses to give way to the events related to his installation. On Friday, June 25, we shall not have the 7.30 in the morning Mass 
to give way to the mass of Cardinal Advincula with the laity, with the lay leaders of the Archdiocese of Manila. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. We stand before the grand horizon, 500 years of faith, grateful today. We bear the gift of nation, totally yours, we give ourselves, faithfully yours until the end, to your mission, Lord. We give our yes.